written evaluation, and you'll get your spoken evaluation that's presented in the meeting, but other club members can talk to you and tell you what they liked or how they think your speech could have been improved. Now, you as a speaker, it's your job to evaluate those evaluations. I mean, sometimes you'll get there, somebody will say, you did that, and I thought it was really bad. And the other person will say, no, I thought that was really good. I mean, you get the exact opposite opinions. We're not experts here, but we're going to give you the way we feel. And you're going to have to determine whose evaluation do you appreciate more. Or do you hear the same thing from more people? So, evaluations. One of the things we do try to avoid in evaluations is making rules. You can't do this. You can't get out from, you, you got away from the lectern. You, there's a lot of things they're going to say that you can and can't do. When Ralph Smedley started Toastmasters, he had a whole list of rules, your do's and don'ts, as long as you're armed. Okay? But, with age came wisdom. And he got rid of the do's and don'ts list. What's the rule of thumb we go by now? If it contributes to your speech, it's good. If it detracts from your speech, it's bad. And so when we try to say, here's something that we think could be improved upon, we need to not only say what we're thinking about it, but suggest a, a way of improving it. No. I don't think that you should have been standing with your hands out to your side the whole time. I think it would, if you were nervous, if you brought them in and just held them over each other, that would look a lot nicer. Or if you put them gently on the lectern. That's how you do an evaluation. You give some suggestion for improvement. But remember, it's not dogmatic. It's not, no, you don't leave your hands out like that. You put them right there like that. It's the only way you can do it. That's what we try to avoid in evaluation. 